Hi, 7th grade team. This is your special education visual content specialist for grade 6 through 8 social studies. Today we're going to be looking at how we can support our students in making thinking visible through the use of explicit strategies in visual analysis. This video is aligned to the 7th grade curriculum in Passport to Social Studies. In this video, we'll be using SDI in order to engage and provide access to all learners, uphold student IEP goals that are aligned to expressive language and making connections, and support student development of comprehension through the use of visual organizational analysis strategies in order to make thinking visible. Upon your implementation of this strategy, your students will then be able to apply prior knowledge of American colonists experience to reflect on their response to British taxes. A great strategy that is embedded within the Passport to Social Studies curriculum is the CITE strategy. CITE is an acronym that stands for Scan, Identify, Guess, Hear, and Talk. This is basically a translation of the concept of visual learning into a concrete pedagogical strategy. This protocol consists of scanning for important details, identifying the conflict, guessing the creator's message, hearing the voices, and talking about your observations. This is a step-by-step -step protocol strategy that helps students connect thinking and expressive language or connect thinking with expressive language. The site strategy is great for three reasons. First, it supports engagement visually and reinforces accountability. Sometimes, especially when we're doing um, station work or small group work, we have students looking at an image and um, discussing what they see. The site strategy helps students actually write down what it is that they're discussing. This strategy reinforces observation and inference skills as well as critical thinking and through the use of this strategy, instructors can promote student thinking and monitor understanding. This site strategy is also great for inclusion. It provides an entry point for all students despite level of prior knowledge or academic gaps. So here we see the example of the organizer that is available to you in the Passport to Social Studies curriculum. And this is the organizer that is available. It, um, it has the acronym on the side, so it goes down step by step um, how the students should respond. But I like to differentiate this a little more and make it a little bit more visual, especially if I'm teaching remotely. Um, so I have modified it here by centering the image in the middle and then adding the questions around it. And they are numbered as well as the, um, the verb is actually in bold, which can be very helpful to students who um, are, are still working on their reading strategies. I also added some sentence starters to help the students initiate their thinking process or their responses. In Unit 2 of the Grade 7 curriculum, titled Road to Independence, Day 4, there is a image of colonists tarring and feathering um, a politician or a, a tax collector. Here, the students are tasked with answering the questions, were the colonists justified in using force as a form of protest? use one of the following, uh, either they strongly agree, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree. And at the end, their um, culminating question is, how did the colonists respond to the British policies of taxation? One thing I'd like to do prior to answering questions like this um, that require the students to tap into the prior knowledge, that require the students to make the connections between what they learned and what they just learned in the moment is use the site strategy. 
especially if we have an image available such as this. Prior to having the students work on the, the site strategy on their own, I like to model how to use this strategy before that, before they start working on their own. So I would use a popular image or an image that the students have used in a prior unit and one, one that they're basically familiar with and center it in the middle. And then I'd also add the element of I do, we do, you do in order to help them see what it is that they're being asked to do. So I'd answer um, questions one and two by modeling the thinking that goes along with these. Being that these are lower level questions, I want to model that for them. And then I want to work along with my students in order to solicit answers for questions three and four, which require them to now start developing an inference or show their understanding of what is going on in the image. By question five, I like to have them do the you do part. And in the last question, they have to basically take all of their answers, everything that they've just discussed, put it all together and write a response based on their observations. And this will let me know um, if they understand the image and if they understand the strategy itself. After modeling how to use the strategy, then I would have them either work in partners or work in small groups in order to look at the image that is actually um, connected to the lesson and have them work and observe this image uh, and answer the questions that's around them. This can be um, a pair deck slide where you can add the, the element of drawing um, and students can actually type or uh, write their responses here. They can also circle or make arrows or highlight um, within the image. So it can be even more interactive if you are teaching remotely. So the site strategy is great for learning stations and breakout rooms. It is a great way to differentiate. It is an acronym, and I, that is something that I always point out to the students, um, that it's an acronym. That's part of the explicit instruction, letting them know that this stands for something. Um, and having this either on my Google Classroom wall or having an anchor chart like this in the actual classroom or on the desks, this site strategy also allows students to visually process information that will add to their comprehension. So prior to being able to make those connections that we would love for students to make at the end of a lesson, it's always helpful to allow them to visually process information and also have them work with partners collaboratively in order to arrive at, um, at a conclusion. The strategy promotes active and purposeful engagement with content and it makes thinking visual.